Hello everyone, I am back again today with another video. This time it is a watch me work structured gel fill on my one client and my best friend and I do a little bit of a French manicure. So please stay tuned and keep on watching. So this is my current set of nails. I use the same technique that I show in this video. And I just kind of wanted to show you guys because it is Halloween inspired and I used a bunch of new products and if you want to know what they are, let me know in the comments. So this is her set. It is three weeks grown out. I'm going to take a removal bit and just go pretty slow because I wanted to show you guys how I remove gel on a client. I believe I'm going about at a 30 RPM speed and I'm just letting the bit do the work for me. I'm really not pressing down hard, so I'm not going through the gel and touching her natural nail. You really want to avoid that. And I take the tip of the remover bit to go kind of get that cuticle area very smooth. And you can take the tip of it to go along the sides and I also take down length with these bits I don't show you on camera but I do normally do that because it just saves time and she has very thin skin so I'm going to use a cuticle pusher and I make sure to score it before I use it so it's not very sharp I also forgot gloves because I'm doing this at home I don't take people at home. I don't take any clients at home. We were just doing this to like film a video. I have everything at the salon and I also forgot cuticle nippers. <laughs> so you won't see me cut her cuticles because I didn't. I will usually ask the client if they want me to cut their cuticles. Sometimes they say no, so I just don't do it. I normally always push back the cuticle before I prep the nail plate so I'm able to prep that area of the nail that I pushed back and then I shape the nails she goes for round a rounded shape because she's pretty hard on her hands and she types all day and it's just what works best for her and most of my clients I like to use an emery board when I do this because it's thinner. And I was trying out this new tiny mandrel bit from Kiara Sky and I really did not like it. I think I wasted my money. <laughs> um, kind of a harsh review, but I felt like I had to work and put so much pressure down on it to use and it was taking too much time. And I didn't like that I had to kind of go over the spot of the nail multiple times in order for it to kind of do something. This was in the medium sanding band and it, maybe that was the issue, but it really didn't work for me. I was really disappointed because this is great. The concept is it would be great for fills, but it just didn't work out for me. Let me know if you guys have tried it and you feel differently. But instead, I would definitely recommend to get this small tapered barrel cuticle bit from Erica. I have no affiliation with her. I just love her products and I've taken her classes. This is my favorite cuticle bit because it works on a number of different people. My client, like myself, has very thin cuticles and I find that this is the best bit for that. Thin, super thin, and then like super thick cuticles. And she has a pretty wide uh, nail bed, so I'm able to kind of go into the corners a little bit. If you had a smaller nail bed, I would definitely switch your cuticle bit, but you can also prep the nail plate with this, which I really like. Kind of saves you time. On myself, I have a little bit more th of a thinner skin than this client, and I bleed pretty easily, so I would use the fine. Here I'm using the medium. And I have like three or four of these bits in different grits. I really like them. I think it would also be good for pedicures too, if you do like a gel pedicure. 
this would be really good to use. It also kind of pushes that cuticle back and up a little bit, which I really like. I've seen some people not use a cuticle pusher and they just use like a cuticle bit to lift the cuticle and it just looks so rough to me and it's like tearing the skin almost so I don't really like that so I always kind of push the cuticle back a little bit to see if it's healthy and like movable that way I know what kind of bits to pull out beforehand um, but if you're like my regular client I usually already know what type of bits you need so I'll have those cuticle bits ready before the appointment, which kind of saves you time. And I go in forward on all 10 nails and then I do reverse on all 10 nails. And I'm just like very lightly pressing down on the nail. I'm not putting any pressure or anything and I'm using my favorite wipes from Cocoist and some alcohol. Please wear gloves. I'm like screaming at myself watching this back because I didn't wear any gloves and it, it just creates so much of an issue if you do this repeatedly. When you're at the salon with me, any of my clients, they will always tell you I'm always wearing gloves. But I was a silly goose and I forgot it and yeah. But I take the wipe and I kind of like get it into her lateral folds. She has pretty deep ones <laughs> where it kind of like pushes up onto the nail plate a little bit so I just kind of get on in there and get it out you can also use like a plastic little manicure brush but sometimes I feel like it doesn't get all the dust off so I just will have been using this method and then because she sweats a little bit like her skin is more oily I am going in with a dehydrator. You don't have to do this if you're doing Cocoists. There's no primer or dehydrator included in this range. Cocoist doesn't need it because the adhesion is so good, but on certain people, I feel like they just need that little extra step to make sure it holds better. Honestly, I don't have a preferred one. I just bought this one at the nail supply. And I'm going in with Cocoa's Mega Sticky Base. I always say sticky. It's Mega Stick Base. And this is just the base gel that I use before the tinted base. I think it just provides a little bit more adhesion. You definitely don't have to do it. But I kind of scrub it into the part of the nail that I have prepped that doesn't have gel already on it but if you weren't doing a fill you would just scrub like the whole nail and take a little bit of a thin amount and get all up in there all in the corners and just kind of scrub it make sure it's even you could also do a little bit of a apex with this gel it won't provide you that much strength but you definitely could do it underneath like a gel color if you wanted to. And I'm also using the Cocoas lamp. I like to kind of follow the exact steps and products at a brand that I feel like I'm going to use a lot which is primarily Cocoas. I use their tinted bases for most of my structured gel manicures along with some other like Russian and Ukrainian ones. But I primarily use Cocoas so I make sure I have all of the bases that I need, the top coats. I use the LeBlanc lamp, the Cocoas LeBlanc lamp. It's rechargeable. I like it, but it is sometimes annoying which this could just be my own fault that I have to remind myself to totally charge it at the end of the day. But that's my own issue. I do have the other Cocoist lamp, the smaller one. I just can't remember what it's called. And I really like that one, but it was kind of old. So it was three, three or four years old. So I bought a new light and it's pretty big and I, I do like it. It's just 
you have to remember to charge it so you get a full cure and make sure everything's fully cured. We're gonna cure that for 60 seconds and then I am going to pull out the Nail Thoughts and Cocoist Tinted Base and Hazelnut Creamer, which is probably my most used color that I have in the salon. A lot of people love it because it's a really nice natural nude. Anyway, let me show you how I'm applying this. So I do a slip layer that's really thin and I make sure to get the corner of the brush into the corner of the nail and I just lightly pull down. Then I go scoop a little bit of that gel on my brush and I kind of wait for it to pull into like a nice little bead and then I gently place it kind of near the cuticle but not totally near the cuticle and I float it back and forth a little bit depending on the nail and then I pull it down straight and then I go in with a little this is the Nail Thoughts Detailer Brush. I really like it because it's long and I like this for structured gel fills if you're for structured gel manicures in general using like a little detailer brush. And then you can hold it upside down to kind of get that apex to fall into place and cure. I'm going to show you this a few times you, so you kind of see how exactly I do it. There's different ways to apply this, but this is just the way that I like. I do one nail at a time. You don't have to do that, but I just think it works the best so that way I'm not kind of racing to place another gel nail on while the other finger is kind of slowly moving to the side. And I usually, if you see that there's gel in the cuticle, I immediately get it out. So the, because gel will flow to gel and you don't want any gel kind of pooling into the cuticle or the lateral folds. Cause that's just annoying to kind of get out. So when I'm applying it, I'm trying to apply it as best as I possibly can. That way I don't have to waste time filing. Now, sometimes the client's hand will move maybe when it's curing and it'll kind of like lop to the side a little bit or it's just maybe you applied a little lumpy and you'll have to file but this video I did not finish file because I just kind of didn't think I needed to and Cocoist gels really self level which is really nice I like that feature about them and I also just kind of flip them over just for like a little, maybe three seconds. When doing a gel fill, I always say less is more. It's really hard to take off gel if you put too much product on than it is to maybe apply a little bit less and then kind of go in with more gel if there's like a spot that you see that there's a little bit of a, a dip. I'm also applying very little pressure. I'm just kind of like lightly moving that gel into place. It definitely takes some getting used to and if you're working on someone, I totally recommend holding the bottle in your other hand because it just saves you time and it looks more professional and it definitely feels weird at first but it'll totally feel like second nature after so i'm just kind of filling the ones the sides of her nail because this nail bed in particular is pretty big and then i'm just kind of refining it with this liner brush i also have no affiliation with cocoist i took their certification course i've been using their products for years and I just really like the brand and I believe in all of their beliefs about nail health. Cocoist, if you want to sponsor me, what's up? <laughs> 
JK, but not JK. I also, oop, there's my head, but I also bring the brush into the cuticle to kind of bring that gel that I kind of placed near the cuticle much closer to the cuticle to get that really nice flush grown out look. Look how pretty. And then flip like a pancake. And I will say most of my clients get about three weeks of wear out of these. Um, but I will say if your client's nails are longer than this, I would not use the tinted base by itself. You should use the Excel or any type of like builder base underneath because it'll provide much more structure and strength because these are semi-hard but her nail bed is pretty long so we're able to kind of get away with it but if she were any longer than this honestly rather than like the three weeks of growth she she will have if it was longer than that i think it would need much more strength but on short nails like my little nails and kind of this length is like the length limit I will do with these tinted bases, you would have to use something stronger underneath to prevent any like breaking. And I kind of just wait for that gel to pool down and self level. I'm also wearing the peach uh, tinted base you can see on my uh, pointer finger on all of my nails actually on my one hand I didn't do my other hand that's how you know you're a nail tech You also kind of want to make sure that the gel is not very thick at the free edge of the nail. You want to make sure it kind of tapers off pretty thin and that there's the most bulk of the product is in that stress area or the apex of the nail. Otherwise it'll become kind of top heavy and it would lead to breaking or cracking. And when you're applying these tinted bases, look, or any gel, honestly, look with your light that's overhead. And if it's pretty straight, you know you applied it very pretty well. And if there's like, it's a little bumpy or wavy, that means that there's like a dip in it. Here's the finished application. I didn't file because I don't really think I need to. And I'm just going in with this multicolored small silver glitter from Fiote. It's kind of like a clear polish and I'm just gonna go in with one coat. Now if you filed after you applied the tinted base you need to apply a base coat for this if you're gonna put a polish over it. But because I didn't file there's still that tacky layer on the nail so the gel will stick to that. I like this holographic silver glitter because it's clear and it can be applied on top of any color to give it a little bit of pizzazz. I'm probably going to be using it a lot in the winter. I'm 
Sorry about my big old head being in some of the shots. Now I'm gonna do a French. I normally do it with a French brush that I have at the salon. It is the greatest thing ever. It's one of my favorite tools. I just forgot to bring it home. So I'm kind of doing it this other way that most people I think would apply their French with a liner brush. Uh, we're just going for black because it's October and it's spooky month. nail techs out there do you guys like doing French I know it's like a love-hate relationship type of thing with us I don't mind it because it's really clean looking but it does get pretty repetitive I think I actually featured my French brush in one of my videos I got it Luna Beauty Store Australia haul it's from Mayo. It's awesome. You guys should definitely get it. Or any brush that looks like it. Usually I will do one nail. If I'm doing a French, I'll do the one nail and then I'll have them look at it and then ask if they like it and then proceed to do the others. Just so you know, you're not doing five nails and then they're like, oh no, I actually don't like that shape. It's too thick or whatever. So if you're my client, you know that I'm constantly asking you questions just so we can both be satisfied in the end. There's something so satisfying about doing French. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. It might be the Virgo in me. And then we're gonna use this top coat that I'm trying out for the first time. It is the Izemi Express top coat, I believe, from Zillaboo. I will leave my coupon code with them if you guys would feel so inclined to use it you get 10% off at checkout at Zillaboo I do make a little bit of a commission um you don't have to use it but it'd be really cool if you did <laughs> so I can buy more nail supplies um and then we can make videos with them but I actually really like this top coat it's pretty thick I got it for my sister to use for college I had just not given it to her yet. I wanted to try it out myself first and I really like it. It's kind of a thicker consistency. It's not the thickest one that they have, like the Fast Ver top coat I think is much thicker, but I, I do like this one. But I'll get a report back in three weeks to see how it held up. And here's the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see any other types of tutorials, let me know and subscribe to my channel. And have a good day. Love you guys. Bye.